Hey, what's going on, guys? We have some breaking news from UFC President Dana White. Robert Whitaker versus Hamza Chemaev is official for UFC Saudi Arabia, as well as a bunch of other fights announced for the card that we're going to go through in this video. And also, I think this fight announcement sets in stone what the next middleweight title fight is going to be. And also in this video, I'm going to throw in what I think is the main and co-main for the UK pay-per-view coming up in July that Dana White announced earlier today in an interview he did with TNT Sports. Now to start off, before we even get into the fights, I called this perfectly. I released a video, if you're not up to date on my videos, I released a video earlier tonight saying the title, of the, the original title of the video was Hamzat Shemaev will headline UFC Saudi Arabia. And in that video, I broke down why I believe that Hamzat Shemaev would be the headliner. And then I go through a couple different opponents that it could be. I mentioned Robert Whitaker. I didn't say, oh, it's definitely going to be Hamzat versus Whitaker. I actually think I said it might be Vittori even. But I go through all the potential opponents. But I believe for a litany of reasons that we'll talk about a little bit in this video that Hamzat would be the headliner for UFC Saudi Arabia. I recorded the video. I'm getting ready to release it. I do a live stream for a little bit. And I'm going to release it at the end of the live stream. During the live stream, Dana White announced this. So if you're a little bit confused, if you watched the previous video thinking it was about the breaking news, that was just my speculation. So I called this. I knew Hamzat was going to be the headliner. And I've been saying that for literally like a month or two now, that I thought Hamzat would headline the Saudi Arabia card. Now let's get to the actual fights. So first off, they announced a slew of banger matchups for this card. I'm unsure what order they'll be in, but I'm just going to go through them in what order they announced them. Obviously, the main event, Robert Whitaker versus Hamzat Chemaev. Co-main event, Sergey Pavlovich versus Alexander Volkov. Banger heavyweight matchup. Then you have Daniel Rodriguez versus Kelvin Gastelum. Then you have Johnny Walker versus Volkan Ozemir. And then you have Shara Bluton Magomedov versus Ihor Potieria. I mean, think about how good this is for a fight night card. I mean, think about this in comparison before we get into any predictions or breaking down the fights. Think about how good this is in comparison to the March 2nd event. For those of you who don't know, March 2nd was the original Saudi Arabia card, and the UFC canceled it and postponed it and made it in June now. So this new card that I just told you goes down on June 22nd. It will air live on ABC as well as ESPN Plus, as far as I know. And, I mean, that's crazy for a free card. But let's go through the original card. Let's just go through the main card. Jarzino Rosenstruck versus Shamil Gaziv. Co-main event, Vitor Petrino versus Tyson Pedro. Featured fight, Muhammad Makaya versus Alex Perez. Umar Nurmagomedov versus Bekzak Almahan. Okay, Steve Ursek versus Matt Schnell. That's the entire main card. Night and day comparison. I mean, this card is amazing. But I knew, I knew the UFC had to bring a big name to Saudi Arabia. I've been beating that drum since last October. And then once Dana really started throwing cold water on the, Israel, uh, the not the Israel, the Islam Makashev idea, I thought, okay, who non-champion could headline this card, and I knew it was going to be Hamza Shemaev. I didn't predict it was going to be Robert Whitaker, but please go check out that video as well. I don't know how these videos will kind of coexist in the algorithm now. I don't know if it's going to screw up my algorithm, but do me a favor if you can go check out that video as well. I talk about why I believe this was going to happen, but this was always going to happen. Whether it was Hamza versus somebody else, I knew Hamza Shemaev would headline this card, and this is a banger fight. And Dana White said, and this is where people are going to get up in arms, I think, Dana White has said, and again, he said this multiple times about many different fights. He says Robert Whitaker versus Hamza Shemaev will be a number one contender fight. The winner will fight for the middleweight title. Well, we don't know what the next middleweight title fight is. We're going to get to that in a second. But let's go through each fight. Okay, who am I picking? Early prediction for each one of these fights. Robert Whitaker's coming off that solid win against Paulo Costa at UFC 298. Kind of a quick turnaround for Robert Whitaker. He's known to be a little bit brittle. He fought... February 17th, now he's going to turn around and fight 622. So that's roughly four months later. I don't like that for Whitaker to begin with, but it's not that bad of a turnaround. Then you have Hamzat Chemaev, who hasn't fought since October. He fought against Kamar Usman. It was a very close fight. Some people thought it was a draw. Hamzat Chemaev gets the nod, gets the majority decision. And then he's kind of been inactive. I mean, he fought October 2023. He fought September 2022. And then he fought... Uh, April of 2022 as well. So the last time he fought two times in a year was in 2022. That's crazy how fast time has gone by. But I knew that, you know, and I talked about this in my other video, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it, but it's been rumored it's not confirmed Hamzat can't get to the United States. Also, if 
you know, if Hamzat wants to fight more than once a year, he's going to have to fight on this card because the only other two cards this year is in Abu Dhabi fight night in August and then the October pay-per-view in Abu Dhabi. So he's not going to fight in back-to-back, you know, two months apart, basically. So he basically had to fight on this June 22nd card and then maybe fight on in Abu Dhabi. But I don't even know if that's going to happen because this is a number one contender fight now. But that might happen. We'll get to that in a second. We'll get to that in a, in a, in a second. But... As far as an early prediction for this fight, this is a tough fight, to be honest. This is a tough fight to pick. I do believe that Hamzat Shamaya most likely gets it done. Robert Whitaker, you know, he's always been small for middleweight. He's really been small for middleweight. I don't know if he goes out there and is able to get it done against a massive guy like Hamzat Shamaya. But where it comes interesting is, where where it gets interesting is, this is a five-round main event. Hamzat Shemaev has had an issue with his gas tank. So, you know, the Kamar Usman fight, lost the third round, was tired out. In a lot of his fights, he's gassed out a little bit. But that's because of the pace that he set in some of these fights. So I'm wondering, is he going to have a different approach to this five-rounder? Because I talked about it in the past. You know, I want all very important fights to be five-rounders. I said I wanted Hamzat Gilbert Burns to be five-rounders many years ago at this point. Because I wanted to see, you know, it's a different approach to fighting a five-rounder. Hamzat knows it's only a three-rounder. And even if he gasses in the third round, he can still win the first two. So I'm curious, how much is the gas tank an issue? Because it seems like a massive issue. But at the same time, the the, the pace he puts on his opponents, I mean, what he did to Kamar Usman in that first round was craziness. We've never seen anyone do that. And it expends a lot of energy. We've seen him do the same thing against Kevin Holland. And I don't know if a guy like Robert Whitaker, who's small for the weight class, I don't know if he can withstand that level of grappling. I don't know if he can withstand that level of pressure and pace and jujitsu, And that's why I think Hamzat Shemaya probably gets it done. And even on the feet, Hamzat has nasty power. I mean, we haven't really seen it at middleweight, but we've seen him go out there and one-punch KO Jiro Mearshart. And I know that's nowhere near the same as Robert Whitaker, but it's, I'm not talking about landing the punch. It's going to be hard to land the punch on Whitaker. He's elusive, but he does get hit. But it's the KO power itself. you know. And also, I just can't get over... And maybe I'm crazy, and I'll have to think about this and dissect it more as the fight gets closer. But I cannot forget the way Drikus ragdolled Robert Whitaker to the ground in the end of the first round and mauled him, and absolutely mauled him for like the last 30 seconds of their fight, where Drikus upset him. I cannot forget that. That that doesn't. I, I just can't forget that. And when I'm looking at Hamza and I'm looking at the way he's ragdolling Kevin Holland, I know Kevin Holland doesn't have the best grappling, nowhere close to Robert Whitaker. I look at the way he's ragdolling Kamar Usman. I know people act like that's not a good win. I thought it was a razor close fight. But to do that to Kamar Usman, we have to put it in perspective. We have to add context to it. For him to do that to Kamar Usman was super impressive. We know the credentials in the wrestling background of Kamar Usman and what he's actually shown in MMA in terms of his MMA wrestling. He's not an easy guy to take down. He's not an easy guy to control. And while Usman did come back and it was short notice, there's a lot of factors. It still was very impressive. And I just don't see Whitaker going out there and avoiding Hamzat and just picking him apart on the feet. I think Hamzat has good striking. I think his striking is highly underrated. has nasty leg kicks. And I think, and you know, I could be wrong with this. You know, obviously I'm just, you know, giving my best guess on this, but I think a lot of Hamzat's deficiencies, his stamina deficiencies and his, you know, his striking defense, I think a lot of it is based on the game plan. You know, like think of Justin Gaethje from a few years ago. You know, he got he ended up getting knocked out and ended up learning a bunch of lessons and he's evolved and improved. I think Hamzat can be one of those guys. I've been high on Hamzat for a long time since he first entered the UFC. And I just think if he goes out there, fights a little bit more measured, still implements his game plan, still has his grappling heavy attack, but he fights a little, he doesn't wear himself out. I think he's the heavier hitter in this fight. I think the threat of the takedown will make him the superior striker, if that makes sense. You know, I I mean, not the superior striker, but make him the more effective striker because Whitaker's going to be terrified of the takedown. You know, Hamzad has been built up to be this boogeyman. And I think Whitaker is going to know, okay, I got to avoid the takedowns here. I got to avoid the cage. I think Hamzat's going to come out there, pressure hard. I think he'll be able to find the takedowns on Robert Whitaker. For an early prediction for this fight, I'm going Hamzat Shemaev to get it done in the first two rounds. I, I say he submits Robert Whitaker or he finishes him at ground and pound. I can see Hamzat going out there and getting a statement win over Robert Whitaker. Now, this is a number one contender fight according to Dana. 
He said that many of times. Sometimes that's not true. He said it when Hamzat fought Usman. He said it was a number one contender fight. We know that didn't happen. Now, what is actually going to be the title fight? We're going to get to that in a second. But let's go through a couple more of these other fights that has been announced. Sergey Pavlovich versus Alexander Volkov. I love this fight. Apparently, originally, I seen from a reliable source that Volkov was going to fight Jolton Almeida. I don't remember what card. I think UFC Brazil. Apparently, I guess that got switched around or maybe Dana didn't like that it got announced. And so he you know, decided to change paths. I love this fight. Alexander Volkov has gotten so much better since his loss to Tom Aspinall, since his loss to Cyril Gaon. He's on a three-fight winning streak, beat Jarzino Rosenstrike, finished him, beat Alexander Romanov, who's a bum, but beat him, beat Taito Avasa, Ezekiel choked him. Topology actually still hasn't updated. They still have Jolton Almeida. So it was announced for 302, but obviously stuff got changed around. We've seen that happen before. But I think Volkov has improved drastically. And also, I think a lot of people don't give Pavlovich to kind of the benefit of the doubt that he took Tom Aspinall on short notice. Pavlovich was training, but he was under the impression he was going to fight potentially Stipe if Jones pulled out or Jones if Stipe pulled out. That obviously didn't happen. He gets thrown in there with, you know, Tom Aspinall, who's a whole nother beast, and he gets KO'd. It's heavyweight. Anybody can get clipped. So he's returning from that, but that was, you know, back in November. So he has a decent amount. He took a decent amount of time off, eight months off almost. I don't think either guy has a real grappling advantage. I think this is going to be a close fight up until it's not. I'm going to go Pavlovich to get it done via KO. I just think, you know, Volkov doesn't do a great job of using his length, using his reach. And I think Pavlovich will be able to get on the inside. And it's not like Volkov has crazy power. He's more like a volume accumulation finisher. So I'm going to go Pavlovich to get it done via finish, but it's crazy. that Those are top two fights on a fight night card, live and free. Shout out to the UFC. People say, oh, Joey, you complain about the UFC too much. This is an amazing fight card already, just the top two fights. Let's go to the next fight. Daniel Rodriguez versus Kelvin Gastelum. That's a great fight. That's a great fight in the welterweight division. I'm assuming that's the welterweight division. Yeah, I'm assuming that's going to be welterweight. Yeah, Gastelum moved down, got mauled by Sean Brady. This is a good bounce back fight for Kelvin Gastelum. If he can't get it done here, he's done. Daniel Rodriguez... Coming off a loss against Ian Machado Gary, where he got brutally KO'd. Coming off a loss against Neil Magny. Kelvin Gastelum has to be able to get this done. Has to be able to get it done. You know, coming off a loss to Sean Brady. Coming off a win over Chris Curtis. Close fight against Chris Curtis. Up a weight class. Daniel Rodriguez is not going to grapple. It's going to be a striking matchup. If anything, I think Kelvin Gastelum has a grappling advantage here against or over um, Daniel Rodriguez. So I think Kelvin Gastelum gets it done. Does he get it done via finish? I'll say he probably TKOs him. So that's just an early prediction for that fight. And then next up, we have Johnny Walker versus Vulcan Ozemir. This is another great matchup. This is in the light heavyweight division. Johnny Walker coming off that loss against Magomed Ankalaev, where he got absolutely destroyed and KO'd in the second round early in January. I thought Johnny Walker might end up on UFC Brazil main card, but now he's taking on Vulcan Ozemir. Vulcan Ozemir is coming off that win over Bogdan Guskov, then a loss before that against Nikita Krylov. This is a tough fight, man. Ozemir, people don't realize Ozemir has nasty power in the clinch. He, he can land and KO guys with short shots. I believe, no, I'm actually thinking of Johnny Walker right now. I was going to say he did it to Khalil Roundtree, but Johnny Walker actually finished Khalil Roundtree, I think, with short shots in the clinch, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. Um, yeah, all the way back in 2018, that was a while ago. But Johnny Walker was on a roll before they lost to Magomed and Goliath. He's fighting dead bodies, Anthony Smith, Paul Craig, Iwan Kutalaba. But nonetheless, he looked improved. He's a flashy striker with nasty KO power. And yeah, Volkan Ozemir, who has good striking, has heavy hands, nasty in the clinch. Doesn't mix in the grappling a lot, but will mix in the grappling. I mean, he won his last fight via rear naked choke, but Bogdan Guskov gassed himself out and then ended up getting hurt, I believe. For this matchup, early prediction, I'm going to go Volkan Ozemir. I think those heavy hands, man. Johnny Walker's super flashy and crazy, and I just feel like he's bound to get clipped on the chin and get KO'd. So I'm going to go Volkan Ozemir. And then the last fight on the fight night card... We have Shara Bullet Mago Medoff versus Iho Potieria. This is let, let's make no mistake about it. Shara Bullet, 12 0, undefeated Dagestani. He's being set up to win here. He's being set up to win here. He's going to beat Iho Potieria. I do worry, though, Shara Bullet does not have the greatest of grappling. So he can get taken out of control. We've seen it a bit in Bruno Silva, but he is nasty off of his back. And his striking is sick. His kicks are filthy. Ihor Potieria coming off a win over Robert Brichek which I don't even really remember all that well, to be quite honest, even though it wasn't that long ago. It was in February. But I, if I remember correctly, Brichek was winning early and then gassed out or something. But before that, got finished by Rodolfo Bellato, got finished by Carlos Ulberg, beat the dead corpse of Mauricio Shogunhua. 
Got finished before that against Nikolai Nigamorianu. So, you know, losing three out of his last five via finish, I think he's being set up to be finished by Shara Bullet. I think Shara Bullet gets it done via KO. But what a banger fight card for UFC Fight Night. Saudi Arabia, which I did predict. Please go check out that other video. Hopefully it doesn't get buried in the algorithm. Now, a couple other things. What does this mean for middleweight? Well, if you've been watching my videos, you already know I did a video on this. Dana White, and I'll link this video down below. Dana White is pissed at Drikas Duplessis. You may not know it. I know it. I've been watching these Dana White press conferences for years. I knew it immediately. He's pissed at Duplessis for turning down the fight at UFC 300 against Israel Adesanya. Don't take my word for it, but think whatever you want. What I believe that he's going to do, and I said this literally over a month ago, UFC 305 just got announced. I believe it was UFC 305. Let me actually double check that real quick. Let me make sure I'm not mixing up numbers. Right after they announced this Saudi Arabia card, they announced UFC 305 August 18th in Perth, Australia. Well, guess what? And I said this earlier, a month ago, the UFC is going to force Drigas Duplessis to go to Australia and defend his belt against Israel Adesanya. So mark my words, unless there's an injury, unless something shuffles around and changes, we are getting Drigas Duplessis versus Israel Adesanya August 18th in Perth, Australia for the middleweight title. And most likely... Obviously, things can change. The winner of Robert Whitaker versus Hamza Chamaya fights the winner of that fight. Now, how does that play out? Because three months later, or two months later, yeah, a little over two months later, you have the Abu Dhabi card. If they want Hamza to fight on that card, let's say Hamza beats Whitaker, like my early prediction, you want the winner of Drikas versus Adesanya to fight Hamza, that'd be a quick turnaround for Hamza in Abu Dhabi if Hamza can't make it to the States or maybe can't fight in London, but I believe there's going to be a London pay-per-view in July, which we'll talk about here in a second. But I think there's going to be a lot of people crying, Israel Adesanya doesn't deserve a title shot. Let me be very clear, because people like to twist my words. Israel Adesanya doesn't necessarily deserve a title shot. No one in the middleweight division right now deserves a title shot. Nobody. Not Strickland. Strickland beat a boost to get an undeserved title shot. Nobody cried then. Okay, he won the bout. Fair enough. Fair play to him. He lost the bout immediately to drink his Duplessis. It was a close fight. Fair enough. We don't get immediate rematches for every close fight ever. Okay. They're going to book this fight. There's a lot of backstory to it. I don't love any undeserved title shot, but there's no clear-cut number one contender getting skipped over. Have that same outpouring and support for a guy like Bilal Muhammad, who's almost 35 years old, on a 10-fight unbeaten streak, getting skipped over, arguably, hopefully not anymore. But I'm not going to be outraged by it. As soon as that's announced, which I believe it will be announced in the next couple of days, I mean, it's so obvious right now, they're going to announce it soon. But mark my words, it will be Drigas Duplessis versus Israel Adesanya. Winner will fight Whitaker. Hamzat winner. I don't know if that's going to make it for Abu Dhabi, though. So I don't know what the UFC, maybe they go back to Abu Dhabi later this year if, in fact, Hamzat Shamayev can't make it. Or maybe they try to ink another kind of site fee from Saudi Arabia and get Hamzat Shamayev a title shot in Saudi Arabia. That'd be crazy. I mean, I, I have no idea on those types of predictions, but I believe Duplessis Adesanya is your UFC 305 main event. Now, another fight, which will be in July. So it'll be UFC 304, end of July, July 20th or July 27th, I believe is the date that's been floating around. Main and co-main, I'm assuming Undisputed will be the main, will be Leon Edwards versus Bilal Muhammad 2 for the welterweight title. Co-main event will be Tom Aspinall versus Curtis Blades for the interim heavyweight title, unless they decide to strip John Jones. So we got a lot of big pay-per-views coming up. Dana White already hinted at a big UK announcement coming in the next couple of days. So I believe, just to break that down one more time, UFC 304, which will be in July, late July, in, in England, will be Leon Edwards versus Bilal Muhammad 2, co-main event Tom Aspinall versus Curtis Blades 2. Then UFC 305, which is in Perth, Australia, August 18th, will be Drigas Duplessis versus Israel Adesanya for the middleweight title. We have a bunch of great fights coming up. Can't wait to see more news from the UFC and Dana White. It's felt kind of like news was dying down over the past couple weeks. But let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Who are you picking in Hamza Chamaya versus Robert Whitaker? That's a banger matchup. Can't wait to see it. How do you feel about that being a number one contender fight? Where does that leave Sean Strickland? I guess we're getting Sean Strickland versus Jared Cannonier too, or Sean Strickland versus Paulo Costa. We could get Sean Strickland, Paulo Costa. That'd be a banger matchup, and that'd be a decent lead up too. It'd be very interesting to see the back and forth. And I think both of them have said they don't like each other in the past. So that's another interesting middleweight matchup that comes out of all this. If anybody I feel bad for, it's Jarek Cannonier. Because you could make a case for him to get the middleweight title shot right now. So I do feel a little bit bad for Jarek Cannonier, but he's not, it's not an undeniable title shot earned from Jarek Cannonier. But I do feel a little bit bad for him. He's kind of left out in this equation, depending on how it all plays out. But let me know what you guys think. Don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And thank you so much for watching.